get destroyed. No, contact! Hold the line! Five, two, three, nine. Yep, direct take you fire. Hello everyone and welcome back to No Man's Land. It is I, Dark Leftovers, joined here with by the lovely Avidus. Say hello. Greetings, comrade. Ah yes, beautiful. And also joining us, luckily from the landlord, actually allowing him to go on the village computer. We have Razor. Hey guys, and fuck you Dark, as usual. Oof. We got it. We, we don't got a, a dev blog, unfortunately, today. But we can still talk about the current current uh, patch and the current update and the war to follow suit. Uh, Avidus or Razor, which one of you two wants to take us off with this? Um, well, there's plenty to talk about with uh, with the update and the and how things have been going um, this war. I mean, I have to say, playing on the map, uh, playing on actually playing on the maps and and seeing them and. And seeing the detail and the work that's got into them, it's very, very impressive. I'm, I'm very glad that they have reworked the towns the way they haven't reworked the maps, because it's absolutely excellent. Uh, the wardens have been doing really, really well uh, early, get, uh, early on, and we're seeing a bit of a dynamic going on with the tech at the moment, because uh, Colonials have picked two tech light tanks, and the wardens have uh, clearly gone for straight to battle tanks. So. It's going to be um, quite interesting to see the difference in uh, technology. Like, obviously, it's going to be very World War Two esque, where you're going to have the big armored warden tanks versus the much lighter but more numerous colonial tanks. So, I think that that's going to be a good dynamic. I'm looking forward to that. It should be uh, tomorrow or the, the day after that that, uh, that comes about. About the time that this video should be coming out, actually. One thing I do got to say, I mean, I do love the town and town revamps. Only thing, and I, I don't mean to start shitting, but, like, why is there only three fucking towns that are, like, enjoyable? Or, like, like we have Jade Cove, Abandoned Ward, and Saltbrook. These are the only two, like, medium to slash big, you know, size towns that, fuck, I haven't even gotten the luxury of fighting yet. Like, you know, and like, because we've been pushing the enemy off from the fucking uh, middle regions. Yeah. I know they, I know they pushed back and, you know, you could still probably fight there. But I'm like, why isn't there more, why aren't there more towns? Like, not, not the exact scale, but like with the design of such that, you know, it's like. Um, <laughs> like, I would, I, what I would have liked to have seen. It's like, I um, would like to get away from uh, AI defenses as much as possible and AI uh, and just and buildable defenses anyway I mean it not just towns need to be improved I would say at this point it's like, like in between towns is quite important as well like trench lines to fight over and things like that would go a long way uh, to making things a lot uh, what's the word like um, more interesting but between when you're pushing an enemy town if there's actual like uh, trench lines that can be manned and taken um i think it would be uh, very very cool it's like have have static bunkers that can't be destroyed but need to be manned not ai defenses but ones that physically you can enter by a back door um and people can physically come inside and stab you with a bayonet if they really wanted to not ones that you have to get in and you're literally protected in it if you have a gas mask there's no way anybody can touch you unless that structure is destroyed um so yeah i, th I think we need to to step away from like uh foxholes and 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 bunkers and, and all that type of stuff and we need to uh what I would like to see is the dev team investing a lot more in um, PVE or PVP I mean, content and PVE. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. It's called Foxhole and, you know, Foxholes are fine and everything. 
but how about like a, a shallow little ditch between the foxholes like an actual trench yeah, literally we, a, shallow, a shallow little yeah like i mean literally a foxhole digging a hole into the ground and that, yeah no that, that well, holds one person that's literally what i mean is actually having them connected by a little a small corridor right like you have them a line of them let's say and then you have them connected by a small corridor that is basically a trench you know. and so, then you get your bayonet you get in there and you can get up and close uh, close and personal with with the enemy I right? believe i'll give you an example previous like real early stages of the game they tried making a a trench and it was not the the game's engine is not having any yeah. terrain tr you know you cannot alter and like if, when you look when you see the foxhole and like underneath it all of that is just an elaborate like paint job you know but the whole structure itself is above it's not below so when you see that little hole underneath the tent of the foxhole that's actually just a you know just a, just a drawing you know to yeah, yeah. feel like it's a hole part of the model yeah. you, they can only build on they can only you can we can only build above ground and it's still possible to have exactly like what we were talking about, like uh, like above ground, like like have sandbags and then a little bit of earth, like you know, going up. I think we we kind of have that now with the sandbag walls being a thing. It just needs a little bit more polish. You, I, you get what I mean? I can see but, that working, and I I don't want to be a Grinch because that would be the correct term in this time of year, but. You know, especially in a game on this topic, choosing an engine that doesn't allow you to go an inch underground, so to say, is like a bit. I don't understand it per se. That. You know, like, the only way that they, the only way that they're going to get around it is by, like I've said, uh, introducing uh, like more trench systems, but not just on Moorin County. Moorin County is brilliant, absolutely brilliant map, but it's all set up wrong careful of it is. nobody ever fights nobody you ever know, fights can, over the trenches and i was about to say because i can show you like like they threw they threw in trenches because that's what people have been asking for but then they threw in the completely worst impossible way like it's like, just to for make example yeah so no just to make it clear like when i said careful of it is, I, I wanted to remind him that one logi boy is a very uh passionate guy <laughs> about uh about how bad mooring is <laughs> and he's he's gonna be watching this mooring county is the best logistics map ever oh my God. dark i, sh I think you should go lock your door now because you might be in danger just saying <laughs> oh boy but meme, meme, memes aside Hello? memes aside <laughs> memes aside those trenches should be facing uh, an entire other direction towards the enemy. <laughs> yeah like like they need to be and... next to the roads and, and things like that they need to be on the uh, like you need to be going down the road heading east and then and then you run into a, a trench that like is right in front of the road you know what i mean like good like obviously the road's passable but like there's a trench that's like either side of the road where the enemy can hold it and then there's another trench, like 200 meters the other way. The way it's set up at the moment is like, there's absolutely zero reason for people to hold areas of trench line. Do you know what I mean? They might as well just fight over the bottlenecks, and uh, because that's where you get the CVs through to build the towns. Or well, just let them the have people. the trench because it's so like, it's yeah. not beneficial at all. Like no. being in the trench covers like majority of your screen. Like, why, why are they so massively fucking big? And why, you know, like, why is it, why are there, why are there both sides of the trenches fortified? Like, are, are you attacking the, you, you get what I mean? Like, if, yeah. if, if I was the designer of a trench, I would just do one side, the side that I'm going to be attacking from, not the side behind me. Because what the fuck, what is that supposed to mean? When I lose, when I lose this trench, the enemy gets to fucking stand up and now fire at me. And like, yeah. Let's uh, steer back to the update, because like, we can go on and on about <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking grinds my gears but we'll, we'll nah we'll yeah let's uh let's go back to to the actual update because there's so much to talk about the surprise uh rocket uh attack that we got oh, oh the v2 rocket yeah yeah it's, it's a nice concept i mean hopefully we'll be able to uh you know to launch it either get launched at us or we launch it at the enemy but you know either way it's still interesting and kind of scary but it's still in the end i'm 
I'm very niche about the whole thing. I'd rather it not, in, you know, it's, it kind of steals the uh, the glory of the medium battle tank, you know, because so, that was supposed to be the big thing. Before we get our access and start uh, chopping into it, um, I just want to, like, point out what what's the actual argumentation behind its implementation right now. So, as you guys might know, um, in, in very long wars, where they would like go on for like three weeks a month and an update would be soon to 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 arrive the devs would have to manually intervene and start like cutting down on the required uh, win condition like reduce it f with one town every day and there was always like you know talks about colonial bias word and bias you guys are helping that team so the main the main uh, argument they they used for for this rocket implementation it's a player driven mechanic that allows you to shorten the war because once once you successfully uh, like launch it and it hits a, an enemy town everything in 80 meters from the point it hits gets destroyed forever it's not permanently can be rebuilt right. or stuff like that um, we, we also should add that the process of building one is quite, quite uh, complicated. Quite some time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the components are not that expensive. I mean, a good logistics could do it easily. It's just waiting on timers. That's really much it. Yes. Yes. So, like, the fueling time, because you, you need to fuel it up, it, it's like 12 hours if you want to hit something on the same map you are on which is going to be a very niche situation. Like, most of the time, you don't want to fucking blow up something on the map you are on, right? And no. if you want to attack, like, their home region or some stuff like that, you're going to need, like, 24 hours just waiting there to, to fuel it, at which time, in all those 24 hours, the enemy has uh, time to just come in and fucking destroy it for you and, like, basically yeah. make you start from scrap. Uh, also, another, another interesting thing to to point out before we, we go into it uh, more, is that you need a 10-man squad to even start creating one. So you need to gather 10 friends or be in a clan that can have a 10-man squad. And then once you build it, it's yours. Like no, Nobody can just come in and take it from you or launch it instead of you. And then the launching mechanic is very interesting because you need one guy apparently like the details are left somewhere in mystery because like they want they don't want to spoil everything for us but from what i understand you cannot use binos so basically you're going to need to be in eyesight of the town you want to hit with binos in a ra sorry with a radio backpack and you'll generate some codes but only if you stay there alive for like 10 minutes which is going to be very I challenging. I think you can use the radio. I know, not the radio. I think you can use the binos because... Some if, people say not. Some people say yes. I guess we're going to have to wait and see, right? I mean, it's like we haven't gotten the rocket out, so I would assume yeah. they would have the uh, binos because if it's not, then no one... Will, I mean, you would have to be literally be so, blind to not know if someone's launching yeah. a rocket. Well, some people say it would be too OP with binos. You know, it's a lot of opinions. We'll see in the end. The point I is... Mean, to, to be honest with you, when you're taking out a town and everything within 80 meters that cannot be rebuilt, I mean, it's already overpowered. Do you know what I mean? It's already, like, it, it's end-end game. So obviously it's going to be overpowered. You know what I mean? And it's already hard to build. So I can't uh, see the problem with the user. Yeah, like, I mean, the simple thing is just make sure the enemy does not have access to it. Simple as that. Just go in. If you, like, yeah. literally, it takes a day to launch. So you can easily get, like, a group of five people like take a naval invasion to that rocket site like they're real close to the coast so you could just land there look spot it you see that the rocket's being built okay get either get a field already or get a mortar team and just destroy the site and bada bing bada boom resets everything i feel like the most important aspect is the guy who's generating the codes needs to stay alive for like 10 minutes approximately so that's that's a big big issue there like let's say you got the rocket fueled and everything that's all fine and dandy but then you need a guy to be alive for like 10 minutes just staring at the point you want to hit, <laughs> which is going to be kind of intense, right? And then, uh, yes, and then uh, like, on the other end, there's like three people synchronizing 
to enter the code and launch the the dreaded uh, missile so uh, the mechanic of it is like really cool I really like the video they did to present it I like that they took the time to basically once the the rocket leaves uh, sirens apparently we're gonna start like uh, raging inside the town to basically yep. let everybody know that uh, a new is coming yeah. yeah which is pretty cool um, I feel it's a very cool thing to have but it's like it's it's not the thing we we need it right it, it, it's a very nice you know mechanic to have right now but it, it, probably for us more bitter veterans it would be out yeah, there. Yeah, there was probably other stuff that could have been worth the time in you know investing. It's one of the things I, I know at the time they talked about it and they talked about the concept of it and it's you know, looking at it now, that's cool that they finally implemented that concept that they've mentioned. But it's like it's kinda of like like you said, like being a bitter veteran, it's just like that time developing this rocket could have been used on, you know, other other stuff, like the all like the many oncurring bugs that are going on right now, you know, and the bugs that's still still been there. And it's just like, eh, you know, it's like, it's nice that they give us nice new shiny things, but in the end, it's like, you know, the old I stuff. Think old to with, I think it had a lot to do with marketing and things like that. I mean, with, right before Christmas, they've obviously just had a big sale. And I think the way that I'm thinking is they probably sat down at a meeting a couple of months ago and said, right, what we're we doing for the Christmas update. Um, said, right, well, we should probably bring out the rocket and the tank and bring a 40% sale out. And at the end of the day, it's worked because with this, there's been a massive increase in players on Fox all over the past couple of weeks. It's just like, is, though, it's, it's, it's nice. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no problem. I love that there's a lot more people playing the game that I love. That's, that's great. In the end, the game is not meant to hold all these people. That's the one thing that they need to realize is the game itself could only limit so much like i heard that those even like like skirmishes that don't even count for the war like what the fuck we're going back yeah. to to lobby yeah. to lobby browser days now and it's like it's and i understand like you know the whole point of the, the thing was to have one focused war but in the end if you have all these people and all these players you know and they're not even contributing or doing anything it's like you know yeah just you Me, know don't just... don't be afraid to buckle down but that's just me. I'll let you go. I'll let you go right now. Yeah, no, just to, like, I just want to see the bright side as well. I guess it's more money into the development of the game, so at least we have that to look uh, to look upon on, right? Because, like, all these new yeah. people, all the uh, copies that were bought, it's going to uh, give them the funds to continue, hopefully, uh, at least for me, hopefully not adding stuff, but also concentrating on what we already have, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you see, the thing is, like, I think what for, like there's a big issue on Foxhole that nobody really ever talks about, um, and it's player cap. Now, the player cap is what seventy at the moment per side, so that's like seventy more than seventy colonials on one map. Yeah, am I wrong? Hundred and forty oh. per. Yeah, hundred and forty. Oh, yeah, players. basically that's so the yeah. Hundred and forty per map. Okay. Um, that needs to be increased to like 300 really there needs to be 300 people on the map for this to be like legitimate because like the reason i say that is because if the game keeps on growing the way that it's growing and it will then it will get to the stage where people are having to wait literally hours to get into maps it sorry just to get into a game and just um, to get into the fucking home lobby you know like yeah yeah you click on the warden faction and like okay there's 10 people ahead of you i'm like what the fuck tell this, me there's so much people in the home islands that i can't get into the actual game to wait in another set of queues like yeah this might be crazy. might be a, a, a bit biased really but i think it's all worth it to like mention it it's like and let's not forget about us the clans right like if i log in i don't want to fucking go play a random skirmish that it doesn't count for anything because there's no room okay. anywhere. I want to join, you know, my clanmates. And if clan. if they're all in Farnak and Farnak has 144 people on it, it's like, so basically I'm going to wait for two hours to maybe get a slot at some point. It's like, well, excuse me for wanting to play, you know, with the group that I normally play with. 
yeah. all you know it, it's it's been lovely to see so many people it is don't get me wrong it was really fun but at the same point you know the highlight of most of us you know who constantly play the game is playing it with the same people that that makes it uh, like I'll just give you an example if I would have just not not joined a clan I would have probably just fucking forgot about Foxhole and just came back to it from yeah. now and then Same you know here. when yeah. there's an update or some stuff like that but because like you know there's all these people I love playing with and we have like this like strategies together at this point we have our own jokes basically we have all this history and stuff our own community community exactly it's like uh, like I don't care if it's like Monday and I've played for the last five days I, I feel like playing again if if everybody's there, right? Yeah, it's, it's been a long game in a while that I just genuinely, you know, the people in the game itself is just, you know, just love fucking playing it. Sure, it's Fox can really fucking hurt at some times, but in the end, the next day, you'll be like, yeah, I'll fucking play again, you know? Yeah, and then yeah. you might have the same exact fucking experience, but in the end, like, You'll rage from it, and you end up coming back in no matter what, because you and the mates that you play with solidify the game, and it just... Yeah. I know it's not a focus right now, that they don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to focus more on the uh, the guild side or the clan side, but that's something that they need to understand is what the, the main people that play are the people that play in clans and guilds. No one plays yeah. Foxhole by themselves. No one. Yeah, then I think that needs to be accepted on a sort of, like, official level, because... I, I always I, I get the feeling that the clans are just sort of like, uh, what's the word? Right, little like mini regiments. Unless uh, you're talking about something else. No, it's it's. I get the feeling that the the devs don't <sighs> dislike clans. Um, I just don't think that they acknowledge them as the way that the game is really meant to be played, because I think that a lot of people. I get the sense from mods, and I get the sense from devs that they like it's a like a selling point of the game that you like. If you if you say to somebody, this game is solely a, a team game. If you if you come on this game, you will need to join a clan, or you will need to join an organized group of people to order to get the most out of it. That will drastically reduce the sales of the game. Like, like uh, some people might be into that, but a lot of people won't. A lot of people just want to buy a game and play it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't so, want uh, any ties, and you know, like I just want to get in, hop in, that's it. But the thing is, Foxo, you can do that, but you're not benefiting anyone, and you're just no. you, maybe you might have a fun time, but most of the time you're just not gonna. You'll be out, out past and outdone by people in clans, you know, and. It's just one of those things I completely agree. Just, the, they'll just lose money. In. The thing about that habit is, is, and this is what I observe, like, every game, right, it doesn't really matter if it's a shooter, if it's, even RTSs in our days are, like, giving you a, a guild option, so to say. Not necessarily if, you know, they don't, like, force it upon you, but there's always there, right? Like, they give you a bonus. They give you, you know, something, so, yeah. you know, an enticement to basically play, get play involved. Yeah, yeah, get involved with the community and such. But, you know, all of them have at their base, uh, you know, clans. I don't know who was telling me uh, the other days. We, we were having a discussion about this. And, uh, you know, they're discussing about how basically World of Warcraft kind of went downhill when uh, the developers start stopped listening to basically to their community and to their guilds so to say and then the same the same thing with eve online with it getting better and better from the point where they uh, got along with the uh, big corporations and such and they started listening to what uh, they felt the game needed and a lot more activity started popping up and the game basically uh, rebirthed so to say right again and like they're, they're constantly using their community and, and their and their clans to improve it, right? So I feel like you know you you can have a game that's individualistic and also have uh, clans incorporated in it. There's always uh, stuff to win from from that, especially with like I, you know I do a lot of applications. Like everybody who joins, almost I I look over their applications. So I saw probably hundreds of them at this point from the point I joined DK. Yeah. 
and like constantly I see people with zero hours like they say I just bought the game I have I, I didn't even fucking open it I would like a coordinated team to play with though you guys sound like something cool you guys sound like you're doing stuff together I want to be part of that something right yeah, so and that's and that's and that's the reason why uh, I think the devs should embrace clans and officially embrace clans rather than just sort of like uh, what's the way, what's the best way to say it this diplomatically um, sort of not acknowledging that they exist uh, is the best way that I can say it I think because uh, have them there but not you know not like looking at them <laughs> you know you know they're there yeah. but we're not gonna look at them they're just like plans are important on Foxhole's gameplay and everything and whatnot like for example, like it's it really sucks when all the neutrals stack in one side, when there's already a big group of like for example when they all stack on the warden side, it's it's real hard to like get any real enjoyment out of that because in yeah. the end they're just getting like yeah. the colonial you know fact the loyalists are just getting pounded by literally anyone and everyone. And that's one thing I this is just more of a segue more on the talk of balancing and where I feel like the neutrals. I mean, everyone shits and talks about them, but the end, I feel like they don't use. They have like the best power to use, and they always misuse it. And they never fucking. It's never. It's it's one of those things. They just need to merge to one giant fucking guild, because I'm. It's tired. I'm tired of the, them fucking stacking and shit and just being like, oh, which which side are we are we going to stack all now, chaps? Like, home. Oh, we've gave the Claudius quite a bashing. Let's all stack on them, so that way we ruin the balance of power. I'm like, you know, it's like eh. yeah. I know, I know, I know exactly what you're saying, and it, uh, neutrals do frustrate me quite a lot. And, and uh, what I've said before, I mean, the, the, you know, people are going to roll their eyes at this, but when you buy uh, Foxhole, with, no, no, when you buy Planet, when you when you log on to Planet Side, Planet Side Two, for for those of you who've played Planet Side Two, you have three options. You can pick uh, the the purple guys, the red guys, and the blue guys. Okay, so you, you pick your faction, you make your character, and you log in to that faction, um, and that is your faction. It, like when the war is over, and a new war starts, that is still your faction. You know what I mean? Like, so I think that is what Foxhole needs. It it needs a uh, basically when you when you pick your faction, that is your faction. Um, you know, you make a character for that faction, and um, and yeah, and that's what you play. I basically. think uh, I think you know the thing is like Planet Side being the massive game it is, and you know basically having uh, having let's say a bigger player base overall, right? They mm -hmm. they kind of had the power, and they were not afraid to do it because like in the end, it wasn't a risk for them. I think like the developers of Foxhole feel like doing what you what you're saying as a risk because you have um, this category of players which are like I paid my money for this game so I should uh, decide what uh, faction I play you know that yeah. that that general attitude yeah and I, I think yeah said, I think they're um, afraid well, there, of there's losing another way they could do it there's another way that they could do it instead of picking a faction every war you pick a faction every 10 wars for instance do you know what I mean so every 10 wars, uh, you get the, the option to change your faction if you really want to. Obviously, bigger commitment. I understand what you're saying. A bigger, they need a bigger commitment because if it's just war to war, then the, the, the neutrals are just going to keep on swapping from faction to faction. But, I mean, if, I, if, I, if we put this to the developers, I can sort of see them not even acknowledging it as a, an issue at the moment. I mean, like... Uh, there is some wars where, and we're not just talking about like when it's against us, because when it's against us, we can. Act, it's actually a good fight. You know, like, but when they're when the neutrals are on our side, we might as well just not play Foxhole because it's just so overwhelming against the colonials that there's just no fight there at all. You know what I mean? Like, there's no so, there's no one to fight. They're just fighting. This is pretty much fighting purely against randoms and you know the few you know colonial loyalists. Lo 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 loyalists and like it's just there's no fun to be had you know because in the end it's like eh. yeah 
I mean, no. then, anyway, we'll uh, we'll move on from this because we've got a lot still to, to talk about. Um, damage changes uh, to sticky AT rifles, ACs, and half uh half track. Yeah, big big question. Why why was all this hidden? I don't know if it was like a fuck up in in the develop department or like is this like did someone accidentally press buff all at equipment and not in, decided to inform the community because i mean shame on the people that were in this that, that were in the armored car but they, they were the first to to holler out that uh the armored car got one shot by stickies now like what the fuck um like, like, i even just know they were already useless but that just one shot in a vehicle and it's like on the off chance, okay. on the off chance that uh, KFC, you know, spends his time again, maybe he's getting bored and he's just listening to us free, just fucking rambling, you know, on that off chance, I just want to remind him, we had a discussion about ACs and, you know, he was tra trying to explain to me how overall they're a good ve it's a good vehicle, you know, and you can use it at any stage of the game. And I was like, well, not really, because it's so squishy and... You know, in the end, I you know I could see his point that you could kind of use it, kind of, but in late game, I use it to die in many many ways throughout but, every stage of the war, from when they're first unlocked to the, being neglected, clustering rust from the other view. My point being, like right now with the one sticky policy, KFC did. If you're listening, I just want to have that talk again. Seriously, like just. Hit me up and we can. We, I want to discuss it again because, like this time, I don't think you're you're gonna get out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then there's this talk about the half tracks, and oh my god, AT rifles just five shotting them. Like, it's it's yeah, it's, it's see, scary. See, I, have it's a lot, scary. I have I have something to say about the half tracks, okay? Because for a long, long time, people have been. It's not. It's not the. <laughs> It's not the fact that half tracks are easy to kill, because they've always been relatively easy to kill. It's just that people use them in the wrong ways, completely wrong ways. Like a half track can go at quite some speed off road. So when the best way to use a half track is flanking aggressively and quickly, going through formations and then like quickly getting back out once you've done your damage, sort of thing. It's, it's not to be supporting infantry on a road going towards uh, a colonial town, for instance. Like, offensively, they're, they're shit, really. Like, unless, like, when they first come out, then they can be used offensively a little bit. But by that time, there's already RPGs out, there's already AT rifles out, so th their effectiveness is uh, negligible, really. You need to be using them in large formations with large um, against infantry um, on their flanks, hitting them from behind rather than attacking them from the front. And that is where you will get the most use out of your your uh, half tracks. I mean, I took a group of four half tracks yesterday um, down to uh, the front, um, and we there was about forty colonials attacking a town, and we managed to get around them and get into their flank and uh we we just we lined up and we charged basically um and we just we slaughtered them absolutely slaughtered them um and even though we took rpgs and we took damage um we inflicted so much damage and so much so much panic that the the colonials really couldn't do anything to fight us because there was just suddenly four half tracks on top of them eating all of their men you know what i mean and that's how you meant to use half tracks as a, a flanking almost like mechanized cavalry almost like you do more damage with a half track if you use it aggressively from flanking an enemy and you know the gunner's not getting the kills that the driver's getting most of the kills because he's running over large large swaths of infantry as he's charging through the colonials rather than attacking and and stopping right at the perimeter of the machine guns maximum range if you like really aggressive with it then you get a he like a shit ton of kills with it, and and that's the uh, the primary reason for me why people uh, like even if they, even if they did make the half track weaker, it's primary like it it the way that you're meant to use it shouldn't be really affected by that, not really because it can still take RPGs and still be going, you know what I mean? It, it can still take an RPG 
and still be uh, good to go. So you get what you're saying, but at the same time, I must say, like, uh, I I didn't jump in game to test it. I'm gonna do it, and probably we're gonna talk about it next time. Uh, but like, from what I'm hearing, if I can have two AT rifles on a half truck, it's gonna be down in like three seconds. Or at the same time, if I have two stickies on me, you're disabled. <laughs> so, you know, I understand in, in the scenario you explained, that's that's very, very nice. And, uh, you know, I can, you know, fool me once, but fool me twice, try it again, and I'll have those stickies or those AT rifles in place. And it's like, you know, they shouldn't be going down that fast. They're slowly turning into the, the ACs, right? Because, like... It, it's not it's it's not it doesn't take much to to stick a half truck especially because it's like you know the turn rate a large target it, yeah and it's, the turn rate is pretty slow so once you you flank it it's gonna be like you know it, it's easier to stick it than an AC the AC is small the only advantage against the AC it's very very slow you know that's why in general yeah, you can yeah. you can easily take it if it would be faster would actually be a hard target to sticky and then it would be more balanced out right because it would be harder to get to it to, to kill it oh i think if they've reduced the health for the half track they should have made it faster um it's uh, not necessarily reduce the health but it, they introduced the stickies uh and the ats i think as anti-armor weapons now so they basically do extra damage to armored uh, vehicles right at least right okay in my understanding of it so it's not the half tracks that change; it's the explosives. Exactly. Like yeah, it's the stickies AT are has been buffed up. I like I understand the reason why they did it, right? Because you know the target here is actually the big, the, the big tank and and the such. Medium, yeah. Which is like it's understandable, but in the end, they should have released something to counteract the medium tank. You get what I mean? Like whenever you release something big and destructive, you release it's pretty much you know it's its counterpart it's Achilles yes. heel, you know? yeah and it's like it was one of those things where you don't just tweak all the existing things because then everyone's be like oh shit you know they changed this as well especially I think my main issue is this, there wasn't any any real information if there is then I'm just fucking blind I haven't seen a, a, a word of text saying anything other than people's you know word and actually seeing in game for myself it could have been as simple as like you guys know i'm really bad with like names and stuff i know that's uh, you know in company of heroes too you have that uh, russian anti-tank gun that actually can uh, fire as artillery support right you could have just had that oh, if yeah. needed right like make the arty gun basically drop the barrel to horizontal position and just like go crazy <laughs> on tanks with it I mean, it's one of those things, and I know Avidus and a few other people have suggested that too, just like let it be able to be like, you know, to act like that. But it, I, this is just me. I feel like we shouldn't, I feel like the devs shouldn't take that approach. They should just make a unique model of an actual anti-tank gun instead of just, you know, making the field artillery just have, you know, a different, I mean, it would save time and effort. And yeah, but it's just one of those things. I love my different equipment. And, you know, I do support that, Doug, just to make it clear. I do support that. I was just saying, like, if you're in a rush, right, you put all the effort in the tank, you put all your effort in the rocket, right? There's, like, no more, like, time and no more effort to be given to such a project right now. You know, just have this at least for, like, as a solution, right, as a band-aid if you want. I would have had that rather than nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you can just come back and, you know, delimitate the AT gun being the AT gun, the RT being the RT. A little bit of a segue, since we're ta uh, mentioning the, the tank back again. I know uh, Avidus made, made the, said that uh, we, we are teching medium tanks while the Colonials have light tanks. And I'm just like, I just like, it just registered into my brain, like, what the fuck is wrong with the word infection? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. I could have seen it coming a mile off. But I, I, what I didn't count on was the Colonials having the... I mean, the they're obviously... They're, they're doing something 
fishy with their tech again um, because they're, they're, they're obviously they've got thousands of more tech than us um, even though they've been like literally had nothing to farm it from for most of the war um, they they have they have the light tank already uh, and they're producing them at a, like a lot like they like just churning these these things out so by the time that medium tanks come along and people discover that it takes an absolutely metric shit ton to run these things like men wise um shell wise fuel wise you know ammunition uh, general maintenance and stuff like that one of these tanks is going to require a team of three people that aren't even part of the crew just to keep it running okay so never mind like you, you get a fully crewed tank a fully crewed tank is five people and then you got like if those like those five people are operating the tank they can't afford to be going to do logi for the tank they can't afford to be going to make shells for the tank and all, all that jazz um so they're going and you're going to need a like individual people taking these things out is not going to work it's going to not have to be organized people taking these out yeah maybe a couple of people can build like build one over the course of like a day or something like that and and get it out and maybe they take it to the front drive it to the front and it's him and his gunner or something like that um that tank will not last long it, it, i mean it'll either run out of ammunition run out of fuel dangerously close to the front or it will just be ambushed and killed you know it, it's just one of those things like it, the, the tanks are obviously of a higher quality they have a higher armor quality they have a bigger gun and all that jazz very very cool but at the end of the day uh, as we learned <laughs> from world war Two, you know like having really nice tanks um you know does nothing when uh, when there's you know loads of little ones firing at you from everywhere yeah so, especially when the enemy can outproduce you and they fucking yeah yeah I haven't we haven't seen the full scale of what the late light tank armor piercing rounds damage could do to you know a debbie and... i think i think a debbie is just going to it's going to be two shot by a medium to the front armor i would say mm. with a that's with an ap shell from the medium or this is from what the medium you're... Medium or light, yeah. Wow, really? It's just one of those things that's where, like, tank gameplay itself is, like, it's you know it's we all we all can agree it's nothing like real life it's what they have it where it has 40 meters and that is it it can only fire up to 40 meters tanks in world war ii only probably in world war one and that's maybe i think I, i'm not I'm not much of a world war one fanatic as i am world war ii but you rarely would you ever see you know actual tanks fight you know in the front lines there are more supporting supporting tools than actual yeah. like you know and like yeah, any yeah. any T proper tank commander would not fucking you know have the tanks lead the assault you know and fire within like 50 50 feet engagements you know because that, that's when you have a big tank it, like i think it's more mainly down to balancing for the game you know what i mean i, I understand what you're saying and i agree with you like um what i think it should be is the gun for the tank should not be uh, a point and click should be an azimuth distance um rather than you know like just point and click with the with the line yeah it should, tanks should operate kind of on more the line of uh of uh, just for reference like the like the uh light light artillery on off a gunboat it should just yes, completely yes, operate yeah. exactly like that except for the arc just have it be like it's a direct it, you know it's a it's a direct, a direct line shot. yeah it's a direct line yeah. rather than rather than a mortar shot basically because like if you're firing at anything you know it's it, it's i mean you're gonna be firing at big targets so and almost everything in foxhole is you know a big target so it's like it's nothing really short you know it, it, it would it will do well it'll make balancing 
and operating even more fun to use since it's not like you're point and clicking and you know sometimes point and clicking could just fuck fuck you over but i just feel like that's yeah. the stand of how should vehicles and tanks should be operated because that's that's to me would be a great it, you know you can benefit and have extended range while still keeping this balancing factor in the actual vehicle itself absolutely i uh i think we should move on to the next point because we're uh, we're quite far in so uh, I just want to talk briefly about a little idea that I had. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people were a bit disappointed when they took out the little campsites, when they, uh, they took out the border region campsite thing, um, because they like to make little border camps and, you know, uh, that type of thing. Um, and I had, an, I had an idea of when the, the build menu opens up, and you get your options to build your foxhole, build your, your barracks, build your, your pillbox, wherever. If there was a, a smaller little tab at the side um, where you could build for maybe five B-mats, you could build a campfire. Or 15 B-mats, you can build a little campfire and a, and a tent. Or like a, a a little guard post or something like that with a, with a, a thing to stop lodgy trucks and check their papers or something like that because a lot of people do like to uh, to do a little bit of role play on Foxhall because it's uh, it's fun to do so uh, and I think if the devs facilitated that a little bit with assets that they already have you know it's, you know and just throw it in for like five B mats or so and make sure that they can't be spammed you know run you know run up run up over by uh, vehicles and all that jazz so they you know they're not littered everywhere uh, I think it, I, I think that would uh, would go a long way with with a lot of people and making things a little bit more fun. I'm I'm pretty fairly I'm I'm fairly certain that they will add something like that at some point. Um, you know where you, you know maybe you can build a warden flag, for instance, um, that's you know has its own mast. So when you're building defenses, you're not just building defenses. You know you can add decoration and stuff like that. And I think that's uh, a lot of people would like that sort of thing. Um, uh, yeah, and I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, uh, briefly as well about something that we discussed last time, and that was uh, the the repaint for for the for the vehicles um, when you're taking them to a friendly vehicle factory. Uh, say I capture a colonial tank, I take it to a friendly vehicle factory. I can uh, put uh, this item in that I can produce, uh, and it will change the colour of the tank from a colonial tank to a warden uh, tank. Uh, not not by not design, not a warden tank design, but just a warden, color. just the color, and and that would go a, an absolutely astronomical way uh, towards helping people uh, in in certain situations. We have uh, a, a picture, for instance, that we're going to show you now uh, of what it might uh, like. A, for instance, a warden, uh, a captured colonial uh, truck might look when it's been uh, to the vehicle factory to get a warden paint job. You know, this type of thing um, would go a long way uh, to helping with, like, friendly fire, for instance, and, um, and other things like that. And I think, like, like I said before, like, even if, like, at least, like, the, the minimum, the minimum, right? The ability to put in the squad name. So we're, like, I don't know, we're squad uh, Charlie, right? able to put down somewhere on on the left or on the right charlie 241 on it right yeah. that would be such because, yeah because like because, sorry because, I, I just wanted to say like it would help also with people being like you know don't not knowing which one is their truck who who has this truck under their squad yeah, claim I right? say, yeah i was just about to say like when, how many times have you seen some guy just running through the towns like Whose truck's this? Squad, which squad holds this truck? I need the B-mats. You know what I mean? And like, they, it does appear they have that mechanic that it does appear on on screen when you try and unlock it. But because you would have it on the yeah 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 they added that uh, a while ago, and it it helps. But you know just having it visually, you know, and just like being able in a glance to know like these are the trucks of our squad. Those are some trucks like 
you know, it, it would just like, instead of like manually going up to the truck, oh, let me see, is this our truck? Oh, it's not. Uh, which which squad does this? It's Charlie. Let me try and get somebody from Charlie to unlock it because I need the thing from it. You understand what I'm saying? You could just like pass it and see, oh, it's Charlie. Okay, you know. Also like, uh, you know, I think like, and I'm going to add the image. I think Klaus sent one. And we also discussed, like, you know, a little modification on the back, maybe having an open back, something like that. Wouldn't be that bad at some point. Yeah, that's I something. mean, we've discussed, we've discussed that before at length with, uh, with variations in vehicles and stuff yeah. like that. But if you start saying stuff like that, then it's not going to get added. Trust oh, me, no, because no, that's no. work, dude. That, no, absolutely that's like, no. That's actual new models and stuff like that. What, what, what all I'm asking for, all any like all of us are asking for, is paint, like paint, basically. And that that is no effort at all, really. Absolutely, like, I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's work, but it's not like a, a new model of truck work. You know what I mean? Change the color and that's it. And I think yeah, it, 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 should, it should be, it should be doable. I don't know how much they want to do it, but it it should be doable and people would be, because like, we know, even inside our clan, there's those few Logi players that like, just really love the hell out of the heretical truck, <laughs> you know, and you, you know, while we will have to like, uh, question them about it and give them penitence, but you know, you can't blame them for like, liking you know the design of the vehicle necessarily and like just applying a, a fresh uh, coat of paint would like make uh, all the investigation stop right we wouldn't have avitus look into them every two days <laughs> yeah. save us manpower basically all right uh, one of these days yeah one of these days i'm gonna let both of you and everyone else that listens and you're gonna under, you're gonna listen and you're gonna agree to all my rambles on how to we work artillery and the upgrading of vehicles in a full thorough thorough podcast and there's nothing you guys can do about it but just listen and you you will all agree being like you know what we we can no longer see artillery like ever we can never see it the same <laughs> but until then, until then, let's 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 all gaze upon this glorious work from one of our. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Two of our actually, because there's two, uh, of, two them. of them. <laughs> two of them. They're both Germans, and their engineering is quite impeccable. Yeah, it's a take my money now situation. Um, it's it, it really is awesome, and uh, I'm just looking at the, the pictures again here. I, I absolutely love it. Um, very, very well done to Klaus and Hans, was it? Yeah. Yes. Hans, yeah. Klaus and Hans uh, making this uh, Deviat Mark I, um, uh, I won't say Colonial Tank there, Heresy, uh, <laughs> Warden Tank. Be careful. Um, absolutely excellent. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. I just want to mention that uh, Klaus manually painted this one. So what you guys see is actually, you know, he took the time to manually uh, paint oh, it okay, with okay. a brush. I was, uh, was going to say a little bit of a paint job would be would would go a long way, but if it's already painted, uh, <laughs> I, <don't> <laughs> <laughs> I actually worked his ass off for it. I think uh, it it looks really cool, especially like you need to keep in mind that this was like their first attempt. This is not something they uh, refined and like tried fifty times. And I do, I do hope they keep they keep shit like this up because I mean fucking hell yeah, like you, you can actually they could sell that for a good chunk of money. Oh, yeah, I, like yeah. from just community, like fucking I would I would give him like one gold bar for that fucking uh, for that tank. I, I certainly would as well. I I told them like especially with the German efficiency because like he was already explaining to me how the next model is gonna have this like you know improved I don't know what because I don't understand a thing when he talks about it. And I was like, they always well, find a way German, German efficiency, like next month you're going to tell me you have a fully automated like production facility with robot claws that just fucking make them, <laughs> mass produce them, and you're going to find them in a store near you. 
It doesn't matter well, where you I'm are. Glad, I'm glad they can make the light tank and our faction cannot because for some reason these two Germans <laughs> know what, what we need than the whole fucking Warden faction. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyway, guys, with, I think I think it's about days. time we. Uh... I'm telling you, a couple of days we're gonna be screaming for the light tanks, and there'll be none to be found. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, just like for the people who are curious, because people might be curious, it's it's 3D printed. It like you know, painstakingly, sorry, drawn by hand by by these two madmen, and it's like like I've been like I th I think from the moment. They sent us the images. I think I have looked at them at least twice a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just yeah. casually going back to them, looking at them a bit more. I just want to hold it in my hands, man. Oh yes, find it, find it the spot on the, on the, <laughs> on the desk. Great fucking miniature. Tell you what, I mean, fucking hell. Be a great fucking miniature. Could fucking think of like you know. Also, um, also war gaming. Just, just to make it clear, consider this uh, like uh, little project our uh, our present from us for all of you guys for the holidays. Like, uh, it, it was made by two by them too, but we're gonna take the credit. Yeah, today. we're gonna be like, yeah, yeah. we're gonna we be allowed like, them to exactly make it for, uh, commissioned. Commissioned is the term you're looking for. We commissioned <laughs> it. <laughs> well, there Great, uh, there goes our chances of getting one. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> They're gonna be no two thousand dollars <laughs> start point. For the next project, yeah. Uh, yeah. Give them, well, give them the Swedish school. Right. Well, uh, absolutely excellent work to those two. Looks great. Uh, and I think we should uh, uh, wrap it up around about here, guys, because yeah. uh, we're getting on now. Um, from everybody at uh, eighty-two DK. Um, and uh, everybody from the No Man's Land uh, team, happy Christmas and uh, happy holidays. I hope you have a, a great time. We probably won't have another video out until uh, after Christmas after, after, at this point. So um, I hope you have a, a, all have a nice Christmas and get plenty of uh, colonial heads under the Christmas tree. Uh, yeah, sounds perfect. Of you, you know. Wardens, uh, just stand by, but Colonials feel free to take off and enjoy your loved ones, and we'll be waiting <laughs> and arming up, and as soon as you're ready to leave the family, we probably already won the war. You know, I've had I've had a couple of messages from Colonials, or I've been informed of a couple of messages from Colonials that, that think that there's going to be a Christmas Day truce. <laughs> um, <I'm, laughs> like, I am going to log on on Christmas Day for the specific reason of proving them wrong. Like, there, there is no truce, there is no mercy. I think we're going to have death squads. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll give them a nice wrapped cook grenade. That'll be oh, yes. perfect for the season. So just to wrap Naughty, it up... Naughty colonials get cook grenades. Just to wrap <laughs> it up, like, uh, you need to, like, make the, the biscuit, the biscuit uh, recipe for it. And, like, I'll put it in the description later. No, everybody wants it. Oh, okay. yeah. I'll give yeah. you. I'll give you. We'll get. A, it'll be a good one. I'm telling you, it'll be good and family friendly. You could even give it up to anyone. It's, it it livens up the parties. I'll tell you, and it's a it's a good thing. It'll be perfect for the holidays. A ginger cooked grenade, we call it. It's just a dash of sulfur on the top. <laughs> <laughs> got to. You got to. <laughs> right. Uh, catch you later, guys. Yep, have a good one, everyone. See Happy ya. holidays for that are sensitive. Enjoy yourself, but not too much. And as always, stop using those fucking foxes, will ya? Cowards. Fight. Fight me like man.